unsafe abortion remains one of the leading causes of maternal death and disability. They are almost entirely preventable. Unsafe abortions are the result of poor access to effective family planning, sexuality education, and to safe abortion services. Pre-abortion care. When a woman is seeking an abortion, you should start by confirming the pregnancy with a urine pregnancy test. Take a reproductive health history and identify contraindications to medical or surgical abortion. Perform a physical examination and date the pregnancy. If the uterus is smaller than expected, you should consider inaccurate gestational dating or an ectopic pregnancy. If the uterus is larger than expected, it may indicate inaccurate menstrual dating, uterine abnormalities, multiple or molar pregnancy. You can date the pregnancy in three ways. 1. For women confident of the last menstrual period dates, you can usually calculate the gestational age using the last menstrual period alone. However, it is recommended to verify the gestational age by a vaginal examination or even better, if available, by vaginal ultrasound. If there is any doubt about the last menstrual period, this must be done before planning the abortion. 2. If ultrasound is not available, estimate the size of the uterus through a pelvic bimanual examination. Around 12 weeks gestation, the uterus is the size of a grapefruit and palpable just above the pubic symphysis. At 16 weeks, the uterus is palpable at the midpoint between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis. At 20 weeks, the uterus is palpable at the level of the umbilicus. 3. Through ultrasound, you can date the pregnancy by measuring the length of the fetus or after week 12 by the size of the head of the fetus from one side to the other. The scan may show an embryo or fetus without cardiac activity or what appears to be an early developing pregnancy with only a fluid-filled sac visible within the uterus. This is called a missed abortion. Medical, surgical and expectant management are all options for management of missed abortion. Show your respect to the woman by telling her that you're here for her and help her understand her options and what is involved in the abortion and what to expect before, during and after the procedure. The abortion options available depend on the gestational age of the pregnancy, her medical eligibility for different methods, her personal situation and preferences. All women should be offered pain management options according to what is clinically appropriate before the abortion. Medical abortion. Medical abortion involves either mifepristone and misoprostol, or alternatively, but less effective, multiple doses of misoprostol. Mifepristone prepares the abortion with a single dose of 200 mg orally one to two days before misoprostol. Misoprostol can be administered by different routes. Medical abortion can be safely performed at home if the gestational age is below nine weeks. Facility-based abortion care should be reserved for the management of medical abortion for pregnancies above nine weeks and management of severe abortion complications. For information about the different treatment regimens for first and second trimester medical abortions, see Action Card. Starting from the time of the first dose of misoprostol, women should be monitored regularly with vital signs for any complications as well as their need for pain management. Fever can be a frequent side effect of repeated doses of misoprostol. Administration of paracetamol or ibuprofen will decrease a woman's discomfort. If fever persists, infection must be considered. The woman should remain in the facility until expulsion is complete and until bleeding is diminished and there are no signs of other complications. Surgical abortion. Vacuum aspiration is the recommended technique of surgical abortion up to 12 to 14 weeks. This procedure takes only 5 to 10 minutes 
and is very effective and safe, with success rates over 98%. Manual Vacuum Aspiration, MVA, uses a handheld aspirator to generate a vacuum. The aspirator is attached to cannulas ranging from 4 to 14 millimeters in diameter and can be used in multiple settings, including those without electricity. The cannula diameter corresponds roughly to the gestational age of the pregnancy. Before you start the procedure, provide antibiotic prophylaxis to reduce post-procedure infection. If antibiotics are not available, abortion may still be performed. Those with signs or symptoms of sexually transmitted infection or partners of individuals with sexually transmitted infections require treatment with antibiotics. Medical abortion in this case is safer and should be preferred since instruments might cause an ascending infection. Cervical preparation. Cervical preparation with misoprostol is not routinely recommended for pregnancies less than 12 weeks duration. However, it may be considered for all women undergoing surgical abortion as it makes dilatation much easier and reduces the risk of perforation with dilators. Prepare the cervix by giving 400 micrograms of misoprostol either vaginally, three to four hours prior to the procedure, or sublingually, two to three hours prior to the procedure. If you're using MVA, you should make sure that the aspirator holds a vacuum before starting the procedure. It is also important to perform a bimanual examination to have an accurate assessment of the uterine size and position before you start. 1. Ask for consent for the procedure and confirm that the woman is comfortable. 2. Prepare the table with sterile field for cannulas and other instruments. 3. Give analgesia, such as morphine and or diazepam. See drug list for details. 4. Prepare MVA syringe by closing the valves and by retracting the plunger. 5. Insert speculum slowly and gently and clean vagina with clean water. 6. Insert tenaculum in anterior lip of cervix. 7. Usually, the cervix is open. If closed, you dilate the cervix with cannulas, starting with the lowest numbers. The tips of the cannulas are sterile and must touch nothing other than the cervix, the so-called no-touch technique. Proceed dilating the cervix with cannulas up to the number corresponding the gestational week. The cannula is inserted gently until it reaches the fundus of the uterus where a resistance is felt. Don't use force to avoid penetrating the fundus. 8. Pull back the cannula one centimeter. Attach the syringe and apply suction by opening valves. Rotate and move forth and back. You might need to detach the syringe, push out aspirate, and apply vacuum again. Repeat suctioning until you feel a gritty sensation and there is no return of tissue. When the aspiration procedure is complete, assess the amount of bleeding and inspect the tissue to ensure a complete abortion. Empty the uterine aspirate into a container and ensure that products of conception are present in appropriate quantities based on gestational age. The tissue should be considered infectious waste and disposed of properly and in accordance with local regulations. You proceed with any concurrent procedures, such as intrauterine device insertion or repairing a cervical laceration as necessary. All abortions after week 12 to 14 should be medical. See Action Card for treatment regimen. Abortion complications. Potentially life-threatening complications are rare following safe abortion, but complications may still occur even when taking all the necessary precautions. Ongoing pregnancy. Women with continuing signs of pregnancy or clinical signs of failed abortion, such as minimal bleeding, should be offered a uterine evacuation without delay. Ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy 
is a pregnancy that remains outside the uterine cavity. It's almost always placed in one of the fallopian tubes. It happens in around 1 in 100 pregnancies. It can become life-threatening if it ruptures and causes intra-abdominal bleeding. Consider an ectopic pregnancy if the woman is experiencing any of the following symptoms. Uterus smaller than expected gestational age. Abortion with suspiciously little tissue expulsed. Suspected ongoing pregnancy after abortion. Pain beside the uterus, either at abdominal or vaginal examination. Strong abdominal pain with local or generalized defense. That is a tense and tender abdominal wall. If ultrasound is available, an ectopic pregnancy should be suspected if no intrauterine pregnancy has been seen. If there is free fluid behind, beside, or above the uterus, a ruptured ectopic pregnancy must be suspected, as the fluid you might see might well be blood. If an ectopic pregnancy is detected, she should be referred to a health facility where surgery is available. If signs of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, pain, defense, signs of shock, referral or surgery must not be delayed. The woman must be attempted stabilized by intravenous fluids and accompanied by a health professional. Incomplete abortion. Incomplete abortion is uncommon following vacuum aspiration when the abortion is performed by a skilled provider. It's more common with medical methods of abortion. Common symptoms of incomplete abortion include vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain. Clinically stable patients have the following three options. Expectant management. Vacuum aspiration for uterine size of up to 14 weeks gestation. Management with misoprostol. See drug list for details. Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage can result from retained products of conception, trauma or damage to the cervix, and or, rarely, uterine perforation. Perforation can happen at surgical abortion. It's often uncomplicated but might cause severe complications that needs emergency surgery. Like intra-abdominal bleeding, defense and signs of shock, or organ perforation to the bladder or intestine. In the latter case, it'll lead to peritonitis, fever, signs of sepsis, and abdominal defense. Appropriate treatment for hemorrhage depends on its cause and severity. Perform acute MVA to remove products of conception and reduce bleeding and combine with manual compression maneuvers in severe cases. See aortic compression and bimanual compression subchapters in the PPH module. Common signs and symptoms of infection include fast respiratory rate, fever or chills, foul smelling vaginal or cervical discharge, abdominal or pelvic pain, uterine tenderness, prolonged vaginal bleeding or spotting. Women with infection must be assessed thoroughly with vital signs. They should be treated with antibiotics and may require hospitalization. Infection can in some cases cause severe infection with multi-organ failure called sepsis that is a life-threatening condition. If retained products of conception are suspected to be a cause for infection, re-evacuate the uterus. Please go thoroughly through the post-abortion care and maternal sepsis module for how to assess for and manage sepsis. Before discharge, women undergoing abortion should receive clear, simple, oral and written instructions about how to care for themselves after leaving the health facility and how to recognize complications that require medical attention. These instructions include abstaining from sexual intercourse until bleeding stops, 
and the need to return to the health facility in case of increasing pelvic pain, increasing or heavy bleeding, foul-smelling discharge, or fever. All women should also receive contraceptive information and be offered counseling for and methods of post-abortion contraception. Immediate initiation of contraception following abortion has been shown to both improve adherence and reduce the risk of unintended pregnancy. If needed, the woman should be provided with iron tablets for anemia, any pain medications, as well as emotional support. In the absence of complications, most women can leave the healthcare facility as soon as they feel able and their vital signs are normal. A follow-up after a medical abortion with misoprostol alone is recommended to ensure complete abortion. In all other cases, women can be offered an optional follow-up visit 7 to 14 days after the procedure.